Welcome to Daily Office Devotions. I'm Reggie Kidd, and every Monday through Friday, I offer devotional observations on some portion of that day's readings from morning prayer in the Book of Common Prayer. Thanks for joining me this Thursday, the proper 27, in year two of the Daily Lectionary. Our readings in the Epistle and the Gospel present us with two sets of brothers. The parable of the prodigal son is a story of two sons, both lost, though in different ways. The one lost to prodigality, the other lost to resentment and envy. One lost son is found, the other, well, the parable leaves his story open so the listener and reader can consider whether their own lives are as consumed as he is by resentment and envy. In his portrait, the prodigal, Rembrandt reveals much more than the emotional embrace of father and returning son. We have in the foreground of this most deservedly famous painting, of course, the younger brother who is being tenderly received by his loving and forgiving father. The foregrounding of the prodigal is precisely the problem for the resentful elder brother. He, the faithful stay-at-home, self-styled slave of the estate, begrudges the attention lavished on the returning prodigal. Rembrandt's portrayal is chilling and noteworthy. In the painting, the elder brother stands apart. His bearded face is a younger version of the father's face, only this is a hard face. He wears the same red mantle as the father, but he stands tall, straight, aloof. He clutches his hands, one hand shielding the other. You can imagine just this sort of self-protective move when the father says to put a ring on the younger brother's hand. Envy always thinks that sharing means losing. Jesus' parable is aimed primarily at the elder brothers. Folks scandalize that Jesus is spending time with tax collectors and sinners. Rembrandt's prayer is that the respectable people will remember that they too need grace. It's not enough to look like the father and to wear his clothes. You have to have his heart. The letter of James is also, if indirectly, a story of two sons. First, a bit of background. James writes with such authority that he has been almost universally identified as James, the brother of the Lord. Galatians chapter 1, verse 19. The Gospels list James as one of the sons of Mary, Jesus' mother, Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, and Mark chapter 6, verse 3. Along with the other brothers, James did not believe in Jesus during his earthly ministry, John chapter 7, verse 5. However, James is converted when his risen brother appears to him personally, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 7. Quickly, he emerges as leader of the church in Jerusalem, Acts chapter 15. And at the Council of Jerusalem, James offers the clinching argument for the validity of Paul's ministry among the Gentiles and of his message of salvation as a free gift to all who believe. In James's epistle, he powerfully bridges Jesus' teaching and Old Testament themes from the law, the wisdom books, and the prophets. And if we read closely enough, and more accurately than is often done, we will see that James bridges the gap between champions of faith and champions of works. How wonderful that on the same day that we read the parable of the prodigal son and his embittered brother, we begin a week and a half long read through of James's epistle. I received the converging of these readings as quite a gift of providence. James could have been a similarly embittered and aggrieved brother. Jesus is foregrounded in the Gospels, while the disbelieving James and his other brothers lurk in the background. Throughout the New Testament, one son is foregrounded. James and the other brothers show that they understand the celebrity status of their half-brother Jesus. In fact, they offer unsolicited advice about how Jesus ought to thrust himself into the limelight. John chapter 7, verses 3 through 4. But in that very passage, John notes that they do not believe in Jesus. That is, they do not really understand who he is, nor comprehend in the least what his mission is. 
one of these unbelieving brothers at least, and praise God for this fact, proves to be ready to respond in faith. It's not difficult for me to imagine James following his elder brother's ministry, listening carefully, taking notes, and pondering. Because when Jesus appears to him after the resurrection, James seems packed and ready to go. The benefit to us is that James's epistle is replete with recollections, interpretations, and applications of his and our elder brother's teachings. Today's passage brims with Jesus sounding instruction about standing fast in tribulation with James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4. Compare Matthew chapter 10 verse 22 and chapter 5 verse 49. About looking to God for wisdom with James chapter 1 verse 5. Compare Matthew chapter 7 verse 7. About gauging true wealth and poverty with James chapter 1 verses 9 through 10. Compare Luke chapter 6 verses 20 and 24. And about handling temptation with James chapter 1, verses 3 through 15. Compare Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Envy is the thief of joy. I'm grateful that we don't have to live in that space. The good news is that we all share in the blessings and riches lavished upon every believer, for we are all heirs through Jesus Christ our Lord. Be blessed this day. Mm -hmm.